Well, thanks, everyone. I appreciate you spending the time. I actually just had to go and do this within our own firm at this point. Um, so I'm kind of, I feel your pain if you're, you're going through this. Because we had to explain why we needed to build a VR, AR practice for the firm. The good news is as soon as we started to actually look at this, um, this segment of the workplace and I explained that it's going to be you know, hundreds of billions of dollars in the near to short term future, being a bunch of accountants and tax people, everyone got really excited in the firm. So it was kind of an easy sale after that point. Um, quick introduction on myself, um, uh, I, I'm one of the leaders in our digital reality practice. This is an area that we truly believe is going to be huge uh, moving forward. Uh, this year we just got our budget for the next 12 months. We are investing tens of thousands of hours into client opportunities and into the eight figures on our client opportunities because we realize that we're going to kind of have to help everyone build out this marketplace at, at, at this point. Um, just out of curiosity, how many people have actually sold a VR, AR, MR, 360? So why are you here? <laughs> Perhaps you should be up here, explain it from a real life point of view. H how many people are trying to sell one of those engagements? And I'm going to shove my own paw up because again, how many people would like to sell one in the future? Good. And there's about a third of the people, apparently, again, who are just here for the next speakers, so I, I guess I'll try and speak quickly then for you. Um, what we're finding is last year was, was very much around people trying to do pilots, trying to do one-off things, trying to do that kind of shiny thing. This year we're moving much more into the prototypes. We're finding that in the first six months of this year and actually starting to do some industrialization now of the solution sets. So it's a terrifically exciting time to get into this. And for the next 42 slides, I'll have to do them in the, like, the last 12 minutes of the day. Um, one of the slides I always like to show, both internally um, and then also in client meetings, is, is the Gartner hype curve. And, and this is why it's important, you know, there, there's three things. One, I like to show uh, a third party in addition to our own information, just because it shows that I'm not actually lying, or at least if I am lying, I'm in good company. Secondly, you know, VR and AR are so much further ahead at this stage than so many of the other things you hear about, like you know, IoT, machine learning, smart robotics. And people just don't realize just how long VR and AR have been in the marketplace at this stage. The other thing is, it, it, you know, there is some disillusionment, but that's literally because we are in this trough of disillusionment. We were all promised amazing things from VR and AR. It was going to wake us up in the morning, make our coffee, make us attractive, all of these things you know, I desire each day. And it's just been like, you know, then reality hit, if you'll pardon the pun, and we're now pulling out of this phase into this kind of slope of enlightenment. We're really finding that with our clients. Then the other thing is, now is the time for us to make these investments because you leave it too much longer, you're going to be behind the curve. Um, the main groups of folks that we're finding buying at this point, CMOs, um, a lot of that is folks who want to have that kind of shiny, flashy thing, um, catch people's attention, get you know some attention to their solution set. Um, that tended to be the last couple of years. The CMOs are still very interested in this area. They're starting now to actually have to prove out their ROI, actually demonstrate and gain the understanding that AR and VR and MR and all the rest of these good things um, are actually helping them to fulfill their objectives, fulfill their roles. CTOs are extremely interested in this. The CTOs have been kind of studying this area for a number of years now, have realized that we have hit that critical mass point for a whole bunch of reasons that it makes sense. Business unit owners are constantly looking for ways to save money. They, they know that they need to, want to be invested in this technology to be successful moving forward. And then we still have those evangelists, the ones who kind of watched the movies and the Jetsons back in you know, the 80s and the 90s and have finally realized it's, it, it's here. And again, all of those folks can be kind of the sources for, for people who, who need this. A couple of stats because I wouldn't be a good consultant unless I put some numbers up. I think it's actually part of my contract. So we're finding at the moment that you know all CMOs are being demanded that they have to show the ROI on their investments and what they're doing and why they need to be measuring this. The other one is just about all the execs in the, you know, are only able to be successful if they demonstrate shared purpose. So these are two of the key things that if you want to sell a project, one, demonstrate the ROI, Two, actually help to make it a shared program. Help people to understand that this is something that we all need to succeed. I always love it when I can persuade my boss to believe that it was his idea because then I've won the battle. 
at that stage, I'm more or less successful every time. So this is kind of one of the methodologies that we use within the firm. Um, quick side point, we are closing a deal about every one to two weeks at this point in what we're calling the digital reality space. Um, we have a really healthy pipeline of opportunities. I'll kind of touch base on our main focuses, but one of the very big areas that clients are coming to us at the moment is how do I, uh, what should I be looking at? What use cases should I be investing in at this point? How can I demonstrate the ROI? How can you help me write the business case? So this is the, the methodology we'll often use as them. So the first thing is like, what's possible? Let's just do the art of the possible. Let's actually just be crazy. Let's imagine all of these big things. Let's be bold. Let's do these moonshot ideas. Then you start looking at, okay, what's desirable? How do we take those kind of big moonshot ideas and drive measurable impact on what we are doing as a firm? And then what we need to be kind of taking these ideas and why it matters to us. Then you start kind of getting a bit more granular, a bit more down to earth. It's like, what's actually feasible? Where the technology is today, how can we then use that? The good news is the technology today is light years ahead of where it was last year. And we know that over the next six months, 12 months, the price point's gonna to continue to come down, processing power and all of the other enablers are gonna be put into place. And then the last thing is this kind of idea of what's viable. You take all of those things, sum them up, look at the ongoing strategic initiatives within your own firm, see how you can link those into your success. Whenever we do use case development, this is one of the, the charts that we actually use with the client who is looking at doing a field engineering solution. You know, identify what the problem is, what are your pain points, um, who are the users, uh, what's their environment, what do they need to do, you know, what do they want to do, how are they trying to do it better, um, you know, what features do they need to use, uh, what are the functional needs that need to be behind this stuff. Whoops, wrong way. Apparently I failed consulting 101. Um, this is the four steps to the methodology that we would then take that information. The first area is, is building out the vision. So this is actually, again, like, let's look at your vision, your ambitions, what success looks like, start looking at the initial case for change. Um, I'm going to go through the, each one of these in a little bit more detail. Then start doing the analysis, actually drive down on the pain points, uh, start looking at the value being provided. Build the business justification for itself. Again, I, I am a recovering accountant. My name is Alan. Um, this is where you have to bring the numbers to the fore. This is how you actually have to, you know, start to, to prove it out, build out the use cases, understand the ROI. And then the next and final phase is kind of building that roadmap. It's like, how do we get to there from here? So in that vision, this is the first idea, and this is actually part of the most fun part, where you can actually do all of the brainstorming. Um, we actually have dedicated facilities around the country where we bring our clients in, do, we call them the greenhouses, where we actually do a lot of this kind of idea generation. You get people excited, you do this art of the po possible, you really start to allow people to be creative, start to th do this kind of aspiration roadmap. So where would you most like to be you know, at this point in the future kind of thing? Get people excited. Um, we have a, what we call a digital reality prioritization uh, framework where we can help step people through how we get from here to there, some of the things which we can do now versus tomorrow versus next year in the future. You know, some of the deliverables coming out of this is this journey map, aspiration kind of workflow, and then as I said, this, this prioritization framework. Next phase, doing the analysis, information gathering. Uh, this kind of provides the, the foundation for the recommendations moving forward. Um, start to build out the use cases. You get all of your content asset mapping documentation done in this phase. We start looking at the platform readiness, so how, how ready are we as a firm to get there? Business justification is the same. I love numbers, so this one, awesome. We find out all our clients love to have the numbers. Uh, this is where you can build out your use cases. We tend to make sure that the executives have been involved in every phase to sell them all along. As I said earlier, as soon as I can persuade my boss that it, his, it was his idea or her idea, then I've won. Um, so this is one of the places that we have to absolutely make sure that all of our executives are involved. And then this final phase is all around you know, road mapping, basically doing your prioritization, uh, sorting out the digital reality roadmap and all those good things. 
What we're finding at the moment is we've kind of got six focus areas as, as a firm. The first one is all around think, which is our classic strategy area, helping our, our clients figure out the ROI, the value. Uh, looking at the ecosystem, we've done two or three big client studies recently to help them figure out acquisition targets or partnering targets. We're doing some work for one of the government agencies right now on the exponentials and where they should be looking, particularly in the VR and AR space. Um, Connect is all around this idea of helping people work together who are not co-located. So this is the see what I see, the hollow presence type, a hollow let, uh, sorry, hollow presence solution sets. Um, we've also found a lot of social applications in that space. No is all around connecting knowledge workers to data sets. We have a big practice of all around architecture based out of our Australia firm. Um, where we do a lot of uh, kind of environments for imagining uh, and being able to do the visualization. The interesting thing around that right now is we've also found that we can do training in those environments. And so what we've actually found on the training side um, is that um, they can open, we did a flagship store for one of the major clients down in Sydney. They were able to open that store a month early because they did the training and the virtual reality for all their staff. So again, there were some of these things which we hadn't necessarily thought of. We have a very strong analytics practice, which is starting to build out very comprehensive uh, visualizations in visual reality. Um, there's some three-letter government agencies which are looking into this at the moment. We're starting to take it out to the rest of our client base. Um, the learning applications are huge, immersive learning. We've actually have a practice in our firm that's been doing this for 10 plus years at this point. So mainly in government side of the work, we're now taking that skill set, bringing it over to the commercial side, but safety, compliance, immersive training is an absolutely huge area at this point and a very easy area to demonstrate ROI. And then on the explore side, this is really around um, augmented experiences for regular people. We have a very large digital practice. I think our firm's number two, number three worldwide at the moment. What we want to do for all of our digital work is now include some VR, AR thing. If we have to give it away for free, we will give it away for free because we want to start seeding the marketplace with this idea that this now needs to be just part of the digital experience. That This is now just that next stage, the fourth transformation, to quote some of the other speakers here. And then the final area, in fact, a huge part of that is also travel, hospitality, and leisure. We are finding a tremendous amount of interest from all three of those segments and stadiums and uh, restaurateurs and all these good things. Uh, the final area we're looking at is play. This is all around storytelling, 360 live events. We are finding a lot of interest from stadiums and the like as well at the moment. Um, I won't go through this slide. It will be in the deck, but again, just about every industry segment has a reason and is investing in this area right now. One of our challenges as a firm was trying to figure out which ones we wanted to focus on day one. Um, some of those are on that list. I'm not going to tell everyone what we're doing all of the time. Um, and then the final kind of slide I wanted to talk about, and I've got like one minute left, is just some of the challenges we still have behind what we need to, where we need to get to, you know, over the next 12, 24 months to be truly successful. You know, battery life is still kind of one of those just challenges. Uh, being tethered is one of those challenges. Just the throughput of data, getting that to consumers or even into the enterprise is a huge challenge still. The app ecosystem is yeah, really, really tiny. Uh, it will get bigger as we move forward and as um, certain product companies announce their, their slate of products over the next six months. Latency, again, trying to get to that sub nanosecond kind of skill set is, is crucial. And then the price point. Again, the price point I, I believe will be much better over the next six to 12 months. And I think that was everything I wanted to say. So thank you for your time, I appreciate it. No questions. Can you take it the old-fashioned way? Sure. Um, just would like your comment on the, uh, the challenge that, that I face in Australia in trying to sell AR, VR, and whether it's the same one you've experienced uh, at Deloitte. Uh, while you do come in and, you know, get them to dream about future scenario and show them the capability and what can be done, at the end of the day, you need to get them on that root of changing and they are interested in that incremental improvement, not necessarily the big dream. And I see that you have that roadmap. So I just wanted you to comment on how you get 
that sweet spot between uh, building the future as well as getting them on that stage of moving forward towards that future, if that makes sense. I'm going to give you one of those horrible consulting words, it depends. Um, yes, and, and, and the reason I say this is because some clients are willing to make those big steps. Other clients, you really do have to inch towards it and you build out the pilot and then you build out the prototype and then you do the prototype again and you expand the prototype a little. And you really have to do it incrementally and sell it that way. Other clients are willing to make big bets. One of the things we're doing as a firm to try and prime the pump right now is co-investing on these opportunities. And so, you know, I've got engagements right now where we've invested 90% of the fees to, to make it happen because we believe it's a big enough, most citable opportunity that makes sense. Plus, you know, we're committed to try and make this part of the, the, the marketplace working, which is a little bit of a cheat, but I never said I was going to be honest. Um,